Hey, what's up? Nathan here from PH Studios. Welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial from the TDCS. And what we're going to do in this tutorial is just a brief overview on the concepts of game art. Now, we'll not discuss how to create game art. I'm just going to discuss the concept of those. And I said in the last tutorial, I will leave Photoshop open and I'll just open a few documents, but I will not discuss any of the very complex parts inside the document. Okay, so game art in general. A general concept is, if you can, to draw it on paper first. Draw it on paper however you want it to look like, and as big as you can, and then scan it into the computer. Now when you scan it, also scan it as large as you can, because when you want to work on the document, work on it as large as you can. Work on a 2,000 by 2,000 pixel document if you can. Because that way, if you make a mistake in the drawing, like you didn't do a line perfectly vertical or something like that, it will be fixed when you scale it down to a 50 by 50 pixel tile, so to speak. So you work on a massively large document. Now, if you have very small effects inside this mass massively large document, when you scale the document down, those effects will go away. And it'll kind of blur into the rest of the document. So you gotta keep that in mind as well. So what I suggest you do is I suggest you simply draw the outline of the shape on paper Scan it into the computer, open up Photoshop, and use a pen tool. Uh, this is what we did in the Space Rear series, and what we will do here as well. You take the pen tool and you draw the outline using the pen tool. Now, you have the outline, so you scale the image down. All that perfectly vertical line that you didn't really want, that you wanted perfectly vertical. But when you drew it, you messed up. Uh, somebody bumped your elbow and it went in just a little bit and then you corrected it. That will be fixed when you scale it down. It will appear vertical when you scale it down. Because so, you're losing that uh, precision. Because you scale it down, it doesn't have like 5,000 pixels to deal with anymore. It just has a couple dozen. So once you scale it down, then you can add the effects, or if you have a massive effect that covers half the image, you can do that, then scale it down. That's one of the important parts that I want to get across. If you possibly can, draw it on paper first, because that way it will help you out on working it out in Photoshop. For each one of these, I did not blizzard, I did not do any of this without having a image of that drawn on paper first to guide me through it. All right, so now let's open up. Let's see, Lizard. Let's see if I have the original here. So Lizard is a pretty complex uh, creature that I had to draw. Let's see here. So this was the drawn on paper version of it. Now this is scaled down because I worked on it and then I scaled the entire image down. I did not keep the original scaled version here. Uh, but I will release it in the end of the series. So I did the entire outline. I also did the legs too and all the effects. And then I scaled the image down. And this includes the drawn version. Now, I did not do the eye. The eye, I scaled it down, and then I did the eye after I scaled it down. Now, I also did animations here, and I'll talk about that later as well. I kind of did a weird workabout to get animations, but it kind of works if you put the time and effort into it. But you see here, I did the outline, and then I scaled it down, and then I did the eyes. And then I added a 
additional effects here. I can sort of see it, a darker point right here. And all this stuff will be finalized. And I'm still working on the effects. And I'll get this entire thing finished before the game is released. Uh, it's a couple weeks away, way yet. But hopefully you understand the concepts after this video. Okay, uh, that was the basic concept of taking a a creature you want, a lizard, let's say, and to draw it out on paper first. Then you scan that paper into the using your scanner and load it up into Photoshop, and then you trace the outline of that critter. And then you scale the outline down, and then you put effects like eyes and whiskers, and if it's a different type of critter, uh, wings, uh, or so to speak, and stuff like that. So after you scale it down, that's when you put all of your little effects in, because if you add little effects with a massively large document, chances are you will lose all that hard work when you scale it down. Turrets are a pretty simple thing to understand. I just you just create a a rectangle box as a turret and an effect like a circular turret base here and all that stuff. So now what I want to talk about is tiles and what the proper way to tile a for the game how to make a sort of thin a tile. Okay, so we have a game that we want to make based on tiles, and we specify that we want a tile to be 64 by 64. Now, that may seem small when you first think about it, but it's even smaller when you come in and realize, because I have 64 by 64 pixels, pixels to work with. Well, you really don't. You have 64 by 64 originally, and then when you want to tile... You want to make these infinitely tileable, which means, yeah, you might see that this image is tiles and you might see the same pattern over and over and over again, but you will not see a sudden end of one tile and a sudden beginning of another tile, which means I don't have a giant vertical line going from here to here. Now, I can already tell that this is a tile. Because I do have one point here, right here, that I do have it. But that I do not care about. Because if you look far back, you cannot really tell that these are 64 by 64. You can see a smooth transition going from here to here. And that's what you want to look for. And what's really more important is if you look at the dirt... The dirt is infinitely tileable. I can make an infinitely long dirt path, and you will not know that it ends at this point and begins at this point here. That's a whole idea about tileable. So, yes, you have 64 by 64 or 128 by 128 or whatever size tile you want to work with. You have that many pixels to work with. So you build your grass tile that way. Then... You need to expand the image so it's 5 by 5 and then you put, no, a 3 by 3 I believe is what I want to say. You have a 3 by 3 so you put the tile you created in the center. You copy and paste that in all directions and you see if you can see a distinct end of one tile and a beginning of another tile. You need to modify the original, so you need to modify the center one. And we'll get all this stuff when we talk about the grass tile. We'll get to all the tiles and how to manipulate that as well. I just want to give you a brief overview on the game art in general. And it's not as simple as it appears. Now, if you wanted to make it a an end and a very beginning to a tile... If you do not want to make it a smooth transition, that's fine. It's your game. You can do whatever you want. But I wanted to make it a smooth transition. 
So it took me a long time to get this grass tile to make it smooth from one to the next. And as you can see, if I go here, I believe it's projects, projects and tower defense, and I believe it's grass tile full. You can see, yes, you can see a pattern, but you cannot see where one tile ends and one tile begins. Maybe if you squint and examine this image for about five minutes, you can find it. But from the corner of your eye and for a brief overview, you're going to be seeing a whole bunch of towers fighting monsters, and you're not going to care if you see the same pattern over and over again. Now, for me, I care if I see one tile, if it's a black tile and white border. Now, wait, I'll get to that in a second. If we have a grass tile here, and if we have a brown border, I do not want to see that in my game. You might be different, you might want to see that. But for me, I want to see the smooth transition to where you cannot really tell when the towel ends and when the towel begins. So I'll discuss this whenever we talk about how to create the grass tile. Now, what I mentioned earlier, the endless level will have a black background or a bluish background, a very dark background, and then we'll have a bright border around it. It's going to be a vector-based level. It's not going to be grass or snow. It's going to be vector-based, which means everything's going to be all lines, and we're not going to have a whole bunch of effects to it. It's just going to be line going from here to here and stuff like that. So at that point, for that level, yes, I want to see a the tile begin and end. But for the grass tile, I do not want to see that. So this is what I mean when I wanted to talk about tileable game art. And what that means is creating a tile, a small image that is infinitely tileable and you can't really notice where it ends and where it begins. If that makes sense. Now this is the grass tile. And at the very end of the series, I will release templates. And that we last tutorial in the series using provided templates. I will add a template for tiles and levels. So you can create your own level. You can create an entire dirt level instead of grass level like I did. Or something like that. A sky level or something. And you can create your own effects and stuff like that. But I'll give you a template to work with. Okay. Now a snow tile, you've seen the snow tile. It's basically the same thing as a grass tile, but it's white. Alright. Um I believe that's it. Just a brief overview. For critters and monsters and players and stuff like that, you want to draw the designated object on paper first. Then you want to scan that image into the computer. This is the preferable way. And then you want to work on that in as large document as possible you can. 2,000 by 2,000, uh, 1,000 by 1,000, and that'll be fine as well. And once you work on that document, just work on the outline and work on large effects that you will not worry about losing precision as you scale it down. Now, if you added a small dot in a very large document and scale it down, that small dot's going to disappear. So you do not want to spend time working on little itty-bitty effects, then scale the image down and find out oh, all my hard work is missing. So you just work on the outline and very large effects, then scale the image down to the appropriate size. Like for my game and tutorial, it's 64 by 64. 
So I scale that 2000 by 2000 document down to 64 by 64, and then I continue working on it. I add the eyes, I add wings or any sort of effects that way. Now for tiles, if you want to make an object tileable, you start out with the designated size, 64 by 64 in my case, and you work on the tile. Once that's done, you expand the canvas size to three times wide and three times hall, tie, tie, tie and hall, height and tall. Now you want to work on that because you put the original tile in the center. Then you copy that tile to the outside edges. And then you see if you can distinctly see, if you're worried about this, if you distinctly see that the center tile you can see where the center tile begins and where it ends and you can you do not get a smooth transition and if you're worried about that you need to go back and modify the original tile again and then repeat the process and again when we discuss the grass texture and all that stuff I'll go into that in greater detail okay so next time Speaking of that, we are going to do the quick grass and a more complex grass. So I hope to see you next time.